Anyway, back to SmackDown and the opening segment. Tiffany Stratton was in the, the ring with Puny and Dull. What are their names? Elton John and... Oh, I... Um, Sly Fox. You know, until, you, until you said that, I forgot that one of them's named Elton. But uh, no, yes. I just know them. They're purely deadly, but I don't know their actual name. Is it... um Elton and Foxy. Well, regardless of what... It, it, the other one's... The other one's named Foxy or Fox or... <laughs> I don't know. Meet the Fockers, whatever. <laughs> and it's just horrible because it's one of their. Somebody thought this was funny or would be funny. Maybe then they don't want to admit that it didn't come off afterwards. Watching this, I thought Vince was in charge. Well, that's that's the problem. Is it was like the worst of Vince had come back, and they they introduced the refrigerator. And I wrote, oh, hell no. And they, did you see, they were trying to give the impression that they were carrying her out on a throne because she's the king of the, or the queen, well, maybe both, the queen and king of the ring. She's the queen of the ring. She's, she's the one. And, and like they've carried Lawler out before, like they've carried, didn't they carry Owen Hart out like that one time? Um, uh, well, they've done. They used to do these coronations for everyone, and yes, you know, Haku had one on TV after he got the crown from Harley Race, and then there was one for King Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That was quite the show. And then King, the Macho King Randy Savage, had the genius read a poem, <laughs> and that was one of the rare appearances of the Widowmaker Barry Windham, one of the great gimmicks that never got fleshed out. <laughs> and then it went away, and then it became the King of the Ring. Whoever won the King of the Ring. You remember Bret Hart got attacked by Lawler on the stage, accepting the crown and the robe and the scepter. Yeah, well, and remember one time they had the guys carry Lawler out and the one in front took a fell, bump and he yeah. fell off the thing, yeah. No, they used to carry out Randy but, Savage and Sherry. I think that was the best usage ever of the throne. But the point is, it was always like six job guys in dressed up in whatever, carrying on their shoulders the, the sticks that the throne sits on and blah, blah, blah. On this one, they just said, oh, fuck no. We're not even going to try. They disguised the wheels underneath black curtains and had fake handles so these four fucking job guys are just rolling. Because it would have been like the, the weight of the throne and the platform plus a refrigerator. So they rolled her to the ring. And it's, it's a white throne. She's wearing all white, and and the white apparel. The whole it looked like an ice cream truck wearing a crown. <laughs> Come on! And no, no, <laughs> and they get her in there, Mister Softy. I'm sorry, Mister Softy. Oh no, Mister Miss Slurpee is. Uh, and then I wrote these two fucking guys need to go to AEW because they make Maddie and Nikki, the Hardly Boys, look like Hell's Angels. It's the same kind of acting. I know that yes. the Young Bucks aren't like that kind of gimmick, but it's the same kind of acting. It is the same silliness. And so then they do the thing where they sing a song to the refrigerator. They're They're supposed to have a... Broadway musical or the purely deadly or pretty dreary or whatever the musical and they put on the the wireless mics the headset mics that you know like Madonna uses or whatever in concert and they and they're supposed to be singing badly that's part of the entertainment right problem is they're singing badly and it's not entertaining either it just nobody wants to see this shit and then suddenly Mia Yim came in and beat everybody up with a kendo stick. Biggest baby face pop she's ever had in WWE ending this. Yes, just to get it fucking over with. But uh, <clears throat> what? It, I can even understand them pushing Jax because she is big and massive and whatever the fuck and uh, seriously... Presented seriously, you can believe that she's hurting people because she probably is. But why did they, what audience wants to see these two fucking Smurfs in there yapping it up? 
you know, this goes to those conversations I have about the bad women's segments in AEW. You know, the stuff with Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, I think people can kind of understand and relate to. She stole her man. They're different personalities. You want to see them fight. But when it's segments like this, when it's bad comedy, you really have to ask yourself, who is this being written for? Like, Who do they think the audience for this is, other than the people being held captive in the arena waiting for the main eventers? And again, it was Vince style, old school Vince style, bad comedy, not worth it. And with, with Tiffany, she's over the top trying to be, she's annoying enough. But yeah, and when, she's good in the she's ring. She's trying so hard, but yes, yeah. but I mean the whole thing. Man, no, that's and, and, the problem. That's the problem. They have her hamming that up all the way. She's good in the ring. If she toned that back to be a little more realistic, I would personally like it better. But the whole thing with her and Naya, it's like a a female division, Miz and our truth. It's just you know this these two wacky buddies hanging out in the back. What kind of misadventures are they going to have? There's so many like bad buddy movies in WWE. And this is one of them. Wacky buddies. And by the way, if you're purely deadly, what are you thinking about your career right now? Yeah, you're working for WWE and you're making money, but fuck, like, how are you going to recover from this when you're done the way they're treating you on there? Now you're just taking bumps for Nia Jax after singing to her. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it, at least when you're the jizz mopper at the porno theater, you're not on national television doing it. You can maintain some kind of anonymity when you don't want people to know that you're a goddamn putz that gets made a fucking fool out of every week. The one good thing is it's nice to see uh, Meechin get used well in a segment, as she was here. That's the only Mia thing. Y Mia Yim. Well, they call her Meechin. That's her WWE name, Meechin. Uh, that's just a nickname. It's like she said her name to someone who couldn't hear. What's your name? Mia Yim. Oh, Meechin. All right, So you're, you're, you're blaming Vince again. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Meechin. Oh, the egg. Oh. You know, Fritz Von Erich couldn't hear it thunder. Fritz Von Erich couldn't hear an egg. Oh. He couldn't he hear had, thunder? Is that what you said? I said he couldn't hear it thunder. That's a, a, a phrase, a figure of speech. He, was, he had two big, fat hearing aids behind each ear. In 1985. And he talked like this, hey. And he talked like that. Hey, come here, nerd. Come here. But uh, is, is every once in a while, when he'd turn a certain way, they'd whine. Maybe they were catching some kind of radio transmission. Who had the worst cauliflower ears you ever saw in person? Oh, good Lord. Um, Like, how's Bruno versus Pat Malone? How do they compare? I, well, I was going to... Pat Malone was pretty... Pretty fucking cauliflowered. Now, he wore the hat most of the time, so it didn't stand out. But, yeah, Bruno still looked human. Uh, <laughs> one of Pat's ears was really bad. And didn't Rick Steiner has a horrible looking one, doesn't he? You know, I have to pay attention. I haven't uh, paid attention. Danny Hodge didn't have yeah, yeah, the most yeah. attractive ear. And what about Paul Bosch? Fez. Luthez. Well, Paul Bosch had, I think Paul Bosch had oh. big ears to begin with, and then... Yes, he, he did, and they hung down. What about, not Buzz Sawyer, but Terry Sawyer? Remember the amateur yeah. Terry Sawyer that worked a lot with Thez in... Yeah. And he, was, he had a run here in Memphis in 78. The problem was in, your, in the, uh, the early days of tape trading, technically the late days of tape trading in the 90s, when some of that stuff from the late 70s in Memphis first started making its rounds around off the uh, umatic reels or whatever they were, People thought Terry Sawyer was Buzz Sawyer. Yeah. <laughs> there was, other than the fact if you saw Buzz Sawyer in 79 and his hair and his body type, they didn't look alike. But you could see the late, the mid 80s, late 80s Buzz Sawyer, if he was trimmer, kind of looked similar to Terry Sawyer. You, you, you would, it was kind of like you wouldn't believe that Ali Vaziri was the Iron Sheik. And when you put pictures of them side by side, that was the same thing with Terry Sawyer in 1978 and Buzz Sawyer in 19 fucking 90. Remember when everyone thought Haku, well, everyone, the people in the magazines and smart fans, some smart fans, some dumb fans, thought Haku was Lenny Hurst? Yes. Who was, uh, I believe, from Jamaica. Right. right? And he had wrestled, whatever, 15 years earlier. And yeah, and Jamaica is a completely different ocean from fucking Samoa. That's right, or Tonga. Or Tonga. Well, they're, all, they're still different oceans. And, and I get the Tonga just gets thrown in with Samoa. But there's also Fiji. 
That's right. So we, we got to narrow this down. 